Yeah, good morning everybody. Welcome to Cruise Man's Motor Vlog. You'll notice something a little bit different today. I am riding the 2022, this 2022 Indian Pursuit. Now before I take this for a ride, I'm just gonna try pairing my Senna 50S headset to this ride command screen you can see here. Uh, it's got this really nice touch screen. Has a lot of information on it. I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to pair my headset to this motorcycle. Okay, add device, connect your phone. Yeah, I don't wanna do that. Let's see if it lets me do the headset. Well, let me just go ahead and put this in pairing mode to see if it finds my headset. Okay, well, I don't know, Philips 4K TV, it's not that. Uh, it's looking. Come on, find my headset. There it is, Cine 50, not paired. Okay, it says it's connected. It says it's paired. Now it's connected. Okay, I think that did it because the uh, pairing beeping on the headset stopped. Let's see if I can find and hear the radio now. Play music over Bluetooth. So does this bike not have a radio? Connect your... Surely it has a radio. It has antenna. It has to have a radio. Well, maybe I'm just not smart enough to figure it out. Let's see what's over here. Controls. Audio. Radio preset, so it's got a radio somewhere. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to study up on this because I cannot see any way to turn on the radio. Not exactly sure why. Seems like you'd hit that audio button and there'd be some controls here, but I don't see anything. I'm not sure if Indian could have made it any more obvious. There's actually a big red button in the upper left hand corner of this screen that says source. All I had to do was tap on that button and I would have seen the next screen that allowed me to choose AM or FM. So we'll worry about this later. Uh, let's just start up the bike and uh, we'll get on down the road. I like the fact that you can swipe. Oh, I just turned off the bike. For those of you that follow my channel, you may have already seen the video of how I when this bike was delivered to me, this is a press bike. This is not my motorcycle. And when this bike was delivered to me, uh, the battery was, did, was, did not have enough of a charge to start the engine. Um, the bike came from California. And I don't know how long it took the guy to bring it from California, but he said the bike was obviously running when they loaded it onto the trailer. So, but by the time it got to my house, the battery had 11.6, 11.5 volts, something like that. And it would not turn over the engine. 
if you watched my video you know the procedure that I went through with the uh, battery tender attempting to get this battery charged and then I only to discover that uh, they do they do include a battery tender port on the dash of this motorcycle now this uh, SAE connector that they've uh, installed in the dash is not only for the battery tender but it's also for heated gear so if you have heated gear that uses one of those connectors uh, you can use it for that as well which is nice uh, it's nice that they include that got a lot of traffic this morning I may not be able to go left out of here I may have to go right out of here I'm not sure yet it's just a lot of traffic this morning I probably went the wrong way But while I'm waiting on traffic, uh, it's a good opportunity for me to remind those of you that haven't done so already, I would really appreciate it if you would click that subscribe button down below and don't forget the notification bell so that you get notified of all my new videos when they come out. I think I can get out now. I think school is back. And that is uh, causing a little more traffic. People here are dropping their kids off at school. Back to my battery tender story. I actually hooked up a battery tender directly to the battery. And the battery on this motorcycle is located in the very front of the bike, down behind the front fender. A little hard to get to, actually. Probably not the best design for accessing a battery I've seen. I understand why Indian probably did it because they're trying to keep as much weight down low as possible but honestly uh, it makes it a little tougher to get to the battery so I got the battery tender connected and I got it charging and then I discovered later that there is this port on the dash for the battery tender well, I was able to get the bike charged, or the battery charged, enough to get the bike to start, and I rode it to coffee one morning. And then when I came home, of course, I'd already put the bike back together. When I got back home, I thought, well, I'll just plug it into this port down here on the dash. It's right here. You can see the port right there. And when I did, the light on the battery tender would not come on. Normally it's either red when the battery tender is charging or it's green if the battery is fully charged and it's just in a maintenance mode. But there was no light on the battery tender. So what the heck? So thanks to some of the good people over on one of the Indian Facebook groups, I posted a message. I said, how come my battery tender light's not working? Somebody suggested that I check the fuse that I could have a blown fuse. So I removed the left side cover on the bike, opened up the fuse box, sure enough, there is a separate circuit for this battery tender port, and that fuse, a 10 amp fuse, it was blown. So I did not have a 10 amp fuse, I did have a seven and a half amp fuse. I went ahead and put it in because I figured the battery tender is only using about 750 milliamps anyway so it shouldn't be a problem and I plugged in the battery tender to the dash and sure enough it began charging the battery the light came on on the battery tender so I solved that issue so it's been a little bit of a rocky start to get this press bike to uh, where I can actually start riding it <laughs> But I think we have it all sorted out now. I do have some 10 amp fuses coming in today, or tomorrow actually, from Amazon. And I will replace that 7.5 amp fuse with a 10 amp fuse. I don't know how that fuse got blown unless somebody maybe tried plugging in some heated gear that drew too much power and it blew the fuse. I don't know. So. Anyway, I am uh, riding the bike today on my normal route home from Einstein's, which I do several days a week. Uh, this is a route that I've taken hundreds of times 
so I know all the little dips, all the little train tracks, and it gives me a chance to compare all of the motorcycles that I test ride with each other as far as their suspension and how they handle around town. Now granted, these are pretty straight roads. This is one straight road all the way back to my place. But I know every bump in the road, so I think it gives me a unique opportunity to compare. I did, this, I did the same thing with the BMW K1600 when I had it. And so uh, it's just kind of standard practice for me to take this motorcycle on my daily uh, commute, you might say, for coffee. Now, if you're expecting a review on this motor vlog, I'm sorry, I'm, you're going to have to wait. I don't think it's fair for me to start reviewing this motorcycle until I've spent some time with it. I also have not had an opportunity to get it out on the highway. So uh, I want to, you know, rack up some highway miles. I will tell you that this is a, uh, obviously it's a V-twin. It's about a 1.8 liter engine, uh, 1,763 or 83, I don't know, it's, it's close to 1.8 liter. It's a big engine. Uh, you know, about the same, almost the same displacement as a Goldwing. And it uh, has plenty of power, I'll say that. I'll, from what I can tell so far, I haven't really put it to the test, but uh, it doesn't seem to be lacking for any power. Uh, most of you know I have a uh, Goldwing with a DCT transmission, so I'm still getting used to the transmission here. Uh, the shifting. So bear with me if you hear me uh, slipping the clutch quite a bit. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing because uh, I'm not used to uh, riding a six-speed transmission. The bike is massive. It's got this massive fairing out front uh, with some what looks to be huge speakers. I haven't tried the, of course you saw, I couldn't get the radio to work. I haven't figured out how to get the radio to work yet. So do any of you out there own an Indian Challenger or an Indian Pursuit? And if you do, put, put the comments down below you know, what do you like about this motorcycle? What do you not like? What are some things you'd like to see changed? Because I will take your comments and I will uh, use that during my review to kind of look out for different things. And it might help me notice things I might otherwise miss. It's a beautiful day today. It's uh, kind of cool. We've had a couple of days of rain. We actually got a lot of rain, which we really needed. In fact, Dallas got about 10 inches of rain one day. Uh, the most rainfall we've had in a single day since like 1932 or something like that. And so we had a lot of flooding. I will tell you one small uh, thing I've noticed right off the bat with this motorcycle with the transmission it is very easy to find neutral on this bike it's probably the easiest bike I've ever driven or ridden uh, to find neutral on the transmission it just pops right into neutral every time I say that my Kawasaki Versus was also very easy they had a special uh, neutral finder setup that Kawasaki uses is really pretty cool. I do not have my second camera, uh, the one that normally faces me. I do not have that installed yet. I actually had to order a clamp for these handlebars to see if I can get that to work. So maybe if I do another motor vlog or I do some other ride uh, video, you'll be able to get the two different views. I might have actually be able to install the camera in a couple of other places too. I'll, I'll have to look and see because this bike does have some uh, tube, round tube engine guards and saddlebag guards. I might be able to connect to those. 
I plan on doing a review of the motorcycle, straight up review, in depth, like I did on the BMW. And then I'll do a comparison video comparing this motorcycle to my 2018 Honda Goldwing. Which one is the better touring bike? Which one's the better commuter? How do they compare as far as comfort, handling, performance, styling? I'll just go over all of that in my comparison video. And I think the biggest appeal for a lot of guys about the V-Twins is the sound. You know, you just can't really compare any other engine to a V-Twin when it comes to this, uh, this rumble, this sound that they uh, produce. They really are uh, unique and distinctive and it, it, it just does give you a sense of authority when you ride a V-Twin. One thing I did too, I, as I go through this water here on the street, which kind of upsets me, the bike was very dirty when it came in. It had a lot of dust on it. Uh, looked like it had come from another uh, bike reviewer and maybe whoever that was, because the bike has 700 miles on it when I got it. And it obviously had not been washed or cleaned up or detailed or anything like that. So the first thing I did was I took it out to my driveway and I, I washed it. Uh, there was also some scuff marks on the tank, on the paint, uh, in a couple of places. Of course, this being a black motorcycle is going to show every little scuff and scratch and mar so uh, my plan is at some point this week or next week I will uh, get out my Griot's polisher and I'm going to see if I can't polish out some of those scratches and the mars because I want to be able to get some good video and pictures of this paint and I don't feel like it's fair to Indian to have it show up in my uh, videos with a bunch of scratches and marring on the paint. But I did give it a good thorough bu uh, two bucket wash and it looks much better than it did, obviously. I also noticed uh, when I raised the windshield all the way up, it appears like there's a couple of screws missing from the bottom of the windshield. Uh, and I looked in the, uh, there's a bag in the, in one of the saddlebags, they gave me a bag with an owner's manual and some keys and some other things. I noticed a couple of screws in there. And I'm pretty sure those are the screws that go to the bottom of the windshield. I don't know why they got removed uh, unless the, unless they changed out the windshield. Maybe they put a different windshield. This looks like the stock windshield. I'm not really sure, so I may reinstall those screws. The windshield's solid. It's not moving around or rattling. You can see it's, it's solid. You saw it out of there, I just popped right into neutral, no problem. Okay, so I'm back home and I'm going to see if I can't figure out how to get this radio to work. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please take a second to click that like button. It really does help us with YouTube. Uh, thanks for joining me today and uh, Watch for my upcoming uh, review and comparison of this Indian Pursuit to my Honda Goldwing and more details to come on this bike. Thanks for joining me today and don't forget, ride often, but ride safe.